So this is uh, problem 5.11. On the Sop Flats at Bonneville, Utah, the British auto racer John Cobb in 1947 became the first man to travel at a speed of 400 miles per hour on land. If he was headed due north at this speed, find the ratio of the magnitude of the Coriolis force, that's what we're looking for down here, the ratio of the magnitude of the Coriolis force to the weight of the car. And then let's look for the direction also. And so this is the this is the drawing. So here's my Earth, and here's my uh, rotation axis, and I can just draw the rotation axis at the center of my coordinate system. This is where my car is, and this is my z prime axis. It's this is my rotating frame, right? And so it's sitting at uh, the the place where the car is, traveling 400 miles an hour. North is the y prime axis, right? X prime is into the board, and so that's pointing east. I have that written somewhere. So I have prime points east, J have prime points north, and K have prime points up. And so we want to calculate the Coriolis force, which is uh, minus 2m omega cross v prime. Right? And so we have to get these guys in the same coordinate system. And so the first thing we do is write this omega prime, uh, omega, the rotation, uh, uh, the angular velocity of the Earth in the prime frame. And so it's got a Z component and a Y component, but no X component, right? The omega just points this way, and that's in the in the Z prime, Y prime plane. And the, the Y the, the Y prime component of it is omega cosine lambda. So you should be able to convince yourself that this lambda is that lambda. And so um, um, Omega cosine lambda gives you the component of omega along my prime ac y prime axis, and omega sine lambda gives the cosine of lambda along the z prime axis. Um, omega x is zero, and so so now I've got my omega in in the prime frame, and I can calculate my Coriolis force, which is um, minus two m omega cross v prime, right? Um, V prime is the speed of the car, which is 400 miles an hour due north, and so it has it's on the J prime, J hat prime, uh, in the J hat prime direction. If you convert 400 miles per hour, it comes out to 180 meters per second, and so that's my velocity that's going to go in here. This is my omega, which is going to go in here. It's this omega, but it's going to be omega cosine lambda J hat prime plus uh, omega sine lambda K hat prime. And so I'm going to stick that all in here and just calculate my cross product. And what I get is, is just a single term. I get an I hat prime term, and so uh, with a minus sign in front of it. And so this is a plus. I should have, a, if this is a vector, I should have an I hat prime here. So this is uh, the only term that's non zero. Both the J hat and the K hat prime terms are, uh, come out to zero. And so this is uh, the minus signs cancel. You should be able to work this cross product out and get this result, right? And so this gives me a 2m uh, y hat y dot prime. This is the velocity in the y prime direction. That's the 180 meters per second. That's this thing, right? The omega z is uh, omega sine lambda, and the, and the i hat prime is just the it's just the eastward direction, right? It's east. And so it asks, the second part of the question is, what's the direction of the force? Well, it's east, um, but it asks for the ratio of the Coriolis force to the weight. That gives you some idea of, uh, of the magnitude of that Coriolis force, right, without just looking at a number. And so it's just 2m y prime dot, y dot prime omega z prime, right? This should be a z prime also. It's just the magnitude of this guy over the magnitude of the weight, which is mg, the m's cancel. And then I can just plug in for all these guys. I get a two. The y dot prime is just the velocity in the northward direction. This uh, 7.27 times 10 to the minus fifth per second. That's the angular velocity of the Earth. We've calculated that a few times and talked about it, so I just plugged it in. The sine of 41 degrees. I think I may have forgotten to tell you. No, I probably read it in the in the problem, but uh, but the uh, the latitude for this thing, Nevada, was 41 degrees. Um, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And so that ratio, if you calculate it, is about 0.0175. And so it's about 
the, the Coriolis force is about 2% of the weight of the car, which is not negligible. And it's, it's significant just because the velocity is so large. You know, it would be a lot smaller if you're going 10 or 20 meters per second. So, um, so that's it.